Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hopefully everybody is doing well. I've got a stack of kids books here. Uh, I've got some announcements and the whole works. Um, for those in Patreon, let's just touch on that real quick first. Video will be up probably 30 minutes after the show. It's already been processed. I didn't want to upload it while the show was live, so I didn't uh, post it before the show. So you will see it still tonight within the hour, 30 minutes an hour after the show's done. The minute the show's done, I'll start the process. It's 34 minutes long. Um, goes into some of the items on the community tab. We'll discuss opportunities with pins, buttons, um, and uh, I think keychains and stuff in that one too. That one's in response to something Doug put up there as well. So for those in Patreon, I also announced the next two videos for Patreon. Weekend, there'll be a long one, and then there'll be another long one, like 40 or 45 minutes on Monday or Tuesday as well. It'll be another deep dive, the second one. The next one's on military uh, and a few other things. It'll be a mixed uh, video. I will run a whatnot before we get into the topics. <clears throat> this is going out the door on that. I've got so many. I'm asked, I've probably been asked 300 times, and I'm not exaggerating about sell some buttons, sell some buttons. This is mostly British buttons. I think there might be some Australian, maybe some Can uh, Canadians. It's five pounds of buttons. I'll be just grabbing a bunch out of here, and we'll do some of those and whatnot. I've got, geez, I don't know if those are the ones or not, but I've got like 4,000 postcards that will be blowing out too um, on the whatnot. And I may even just start grabbing a few boxes, depending on how the show's going. But you, I promise you'll see a whatnot this weekend, either Saturday or Sunday. Um, I'm just waiting on my son's schedules. He's got something going on, too. He usually helps me. Um, so anyway, that'll be a whatnot one. Let me pop back over there. I've got unsweetened tea for... Anyway, so that'll be a whatnot one. I get asked, oh, geez, I don't think a day goes by where one of the kids doesn't say at least a couple people are asking if I sell bulk. I may sell some bulk Victorian scrap. Because I've got, we did a, a quick uh, weight-wise, I've got 120 pounds of it, including there's a big bin right next to me down here that's probably got 60 pounds on its own. But um, I may just grab some of that, too. It's something I usually, we sell all the time, but I don't, it, it takes longer to list. So we're, we try to list um, five or less photo items, always. I mean, and I've got so many of those that that's what we list first. Um, I do have a bunch of books here now. I did pick up some. We're going to discuss that. I'm sorry, I've got an eyelash or something. Uh, we're going to discuss kids' books today. That will be the topic at hand. Now, I pick up kids' books all the time, and I am not exaggerating. They're not super, super high value, the majority of what I pick up. Kids' books these days on eBay are like what the, the bread and butter books used to be on Amazon when scanning was like the fad. When we started into scanning, you could scan and you could make, you know, decent money from selling volume of cheaper books, 5, 10, 15 bucks. But you'd sell 40 a day, 50 a day, you know, so a lot of stuff moved on those. The kids' books, these more common ones for us, have taken up the slack of what we used to do on Amazon scanning books. I used to have the, I wish I could remember the name of it, but... <clears throat> It's a little device, and I may still have it sitting here. No, I didn't think so, but I, it's a little device that clips onto the bottom of your phone, and it, it's like a database in itself, and I could just, I'd spend like three or four years since I've done it, done that. Um, but you could just scan the books, even if they lock the internet so you can't get any internet access. It had everything in there, and I set it so it would just beep. If I was going to make, you know, five or six bucks after all fees and mailing the product into to, to, um, uh, FBA, I, I, I bought it. I just threw it in the cart, and we just sent them all in, and no big deal. I got a little barcode scanner here, too, so I can instantly list them on, on Amazon. I, I don't use it much these days because eBay is a little different. Um, sometimes I, I have, just to see how eBay works on it. But Now, these are little golden books, and I've... I've talked about little golden books like left and right. Let's make sure everybody can hear me. Um, that looks like no comments on sound or anything else like that. Let me just close a couple extra things off. In fact, let me reload the page if it's not going to act up on us here. Okay. I've talked about these a lot. 
Um, I've probably sold, uh, give you some honest numbers, probably six or 700 little golden books. There's, there's a huge assortment of little golden books. So sometimes I've run across big, massive lots of them where I've purchased, geez, probably one of my best purchases was when Savers was opened on, on little golden books. I picked up like a hundred or some huge, insane number for like 69 cents a piece at the kid book price. And I picked out all the A's. Every one that was an A. Now, what's an A in one of these? Now, these are all first editions. First editions. Uh, thanks, Joe. First editions on these. Let me make sure you can see them all right. I don't know if this is going to show here or not, but we're going to try. Yeah, this one should show. Okay. Now, right, right there is an A. That is in every little golden book that is a first edition up until like 90s or something, if I'm not mistaken. If it has an A right there, it is a first edition, first press in the whole works. If it has a B, second, C, third, and, and on and on and on and on. So that's how you can tell. Um, Condition-wise, make sure they're in decent condition if you're going to buy these. Now, these were like $2 a piece. Their price, their original price... It was on sale. We went at a day when there's a sale, and I had two or three of those stamper cards. So at the, this place, as well as a whole bunch here in town, you can get clip cards where they'll, you know, for every $10 you buy, you get a, a stamp on there. You fill the stamp up, you get $10. So these, and in at the end of the day, were like a dollar two, is what we paid for them. Figured out across the board. So we picked up a whole bunch of these at about a dollar two. Every one of these I should easily, easily, easily get ten bucks for. Now, yeah, that's not huge, but when you when you factor in that <clears throat> when I go pick stuff up, if I run into one, I usually run into several. So right off the bat, you're getting seven sixty-eight or something after fees and everything said and done, somewhere in that range, I would say. Um, less fees, you're making close to seven bucks a pop at the end of the day on each one of these. Now. I'm going to put more than that on it. I wouldn't doubt that most of these are going to go for 12, 14 bucks. The condition is really nice. There's no writing on the inside. Usually when I run into these two, what to look for? What would you look for? When I run into them, I'm looking for these types of titles. You don't see Peter Pan these days. You won't see a cover like this these days either. Um, Huckleberry Hound. He's not around anymore. If you run into something that says Huckleberry Hound, it's older. It's got to be 80s or before. Huckleberry Hound was around, geez, what, late 50s, 60s, 70s, and through that era, because they were still around when I was a, a young child in the 70s. I look for childhood characters. That's what I look for when I'm out in public. And we, we pick them up all the time. Now, we're going to go into some other types here and, and some other areas and things, too, because I got a, a decent little stack that I picked up here. Um, so I wanted to cover a bunch of them. I have a bunch of different kinds. <clears throat> uh, just looking at what you got up there, Jimmy. Or Marty, I'm sorry. Um, I, I Again, I got several different kinds, but let's just flip through these real quick here. Let me pop back to the other screen so we can make sure you're seeing them. Now, these all have A's on them. Every one of these is an A. Um, the Golden Goose. Now, again, they're early titles. Early titles. These are all early. And how it's written all matters. Where it's written at. Um, even the backs on these. I instantly knew that was an old one by the back. Um, same with most all of these, honestly. Um, again, good one here. This is probably one of the cheaper ones at 10 bucks or so. If you wait, you put them up for $17.99. You wait, you can probably get 14 bucks for every one of these or more. They had a couple other nice ones, the Jetsons, but it was damaged. And I don't mess with damaged ones anymore at all. Back in the day, I'd buy them to throw in a lot. But if you're just starting off and you're trying to get some inventory, we're going to at least make something. Even if, like, the these will come off. This is a strip that's been added on. Sometimes if they get moist, the glue comes off and the whole spine drops off. Uh, believe it or not, there is a reproduction that you can buy strips of to fix these. So you got to be careful. I don't fix them. I don't buy them damaged. I don't want to mess with that. Um, I fix really old stuff, and that's about it these days. Um, that's this one here. Again, early one. This isn't modern. It's not out now. So when you're looking at stuff like this, think about what's modern, what's out. If you don't know the difference to 29 cent, 25 cent are good cover prices to look into. 
I'm not going to say they're all going to be first editions like A's, but it's something to look for. And I do, I, I really do phenomenally well with these. So let's say what I got six here, I've got six bucks, six dollars and uh, what, 12 cents into these right here. One of these, one single one of these is going to easily get me 10 bucks back. And that's just these. Let me show you the last of them here too. Now, like early ones, people say, well, it's the first edition of the Pokey Little Puppy. Well, they made a ton of them. It was extremely popular. It's not a character, so to speak. The people who buy this are true diehard um, little golden books who want everyone in the A condition first. And that's that's why these sell. So it's not worth a ton of money. Some of the ones I'm showing you, I'll probably get 15 or 20 bucks for too. Um, and another Peter Pan, which you probably saw in the beginning. But uh, artwork wise is great. That's one of the key things I look for. This is something someone who's a Peter Pan fan, and they, they'll probably buy both of the Peter Pans, would be my guess. Um, so, you know, I get excited when I see stuff like this, in all honesty, because I, I have childhood memories of similar style of books when I was younger. I, I remember being five, six, and seven in kindergarten years. I, I mean, not a lot, but I, I remember certain things, and it's usually characters and things like that. Um, so these are fabulous items here. Yeah, there is a large version. Now, I'm going to show you the size of it. Is it a little golden book? No, I got some more here, so we're going to show you some other things here. Um, overall, an original first A with an A where I showed you. If you didn't see that part, go back and look at it. But the A's, I usually get 10 bucks a piece for them. If it's like there's there's uh, one or two that have a puzzle. If it's something like that, yeah. If it's the doll cutout, yeah. Those go for 30, 40 bucks. We've sold little golden books for 150, 160 a piece. Dust jackets. If you got the dust jacket for something that's that's picture like this with the graphic covers, those always go for some decent money. Again, not everything was issued with the dust jacket, but um, just keep that in mind. Now, let's talk about, let me show you the first one here. Okay, here's a good example. There's some names. My wife was big into into kids books. She's We've bought them for years since we've been going to thrift stores. 25 years ago, when I first met my wife, we bought kids' books. And, and she's got some that she remembers from a kid. Mrs. Twigley's Treehouse. Look that one up. Mrs. Twigley's Treehouse. Um, what's the Herald? Jeez, I can't think of it. There's a, there's a skunk series which she has. I can read books. Uh, Crosby Bonzel. Stuff like that goes extremely well. Look up I Can Read and then kids' books. That's a whole genre in and of itself. And there are collectors that want every one. Some editions of those are insanely scarce. I, I'm not going to step out of shot, but I, I have some I should have grabbed. I didn't think about that. But another name I always look for is this one here, Parents Magazine Press. Parents Magazine is still a magazine. My wife subscribed to it when we had our, our kids. Um, <clears throat> it was something that she re read routinely. I, I can't say it's the same one, but there there's a Parents Magazine that's still around. It's a good magazine. It's got a lot of kids stuff in it. But What's good about this, the book's not worth much money. It's like a five to eight buck book. This has the dust jacket. And it is a first edition. So the dust jacket's in pretty darn good condition. Now if you watched my show for any length of time, we have sold probably $15,000 in, in just the dust jackets. You can go to my store. I got a handful left these days. We had hundreds of them. And I still have some in a box. We need to get to one of these days. But just dust jackets, $15,000. We sold one single for the little engine that could. I sold the dust jacket, the first edition dust jacket for like almost $800. It was like $748. Uh, I think the shipping fees brought it close to with insurance and all that close to, to $800. Anything with a dust jacket from Parents Magazine, I almost always grab it because, again, like these, it's 10 bucks almost every single time. What you're going to run into when you look these up, you're going to have to look at a bunch to see. Most all of them will not have the dust jacket. Most all of the time, when I, the, the odds of running into a kid's book with a dust jacket are geez, really slim. Probably 5% or less of the time you're going to run into a dust jacket with a vintage kid's book. There are places to find them, and I've talked about it in Patreon. I think I've literally stated where I've bought thousands of dollars worth of dust jackets. But um, it's in decent condition. Nothing really wrong with it. Again, first edition. Uh, it's from a series. The artwork's 
creative. Um, I don't so much like the tones, but again, the book itself isn't worth a ton of money. I wouldn't have bought it if it was just the book without the dust jacket. Let's put it that way. The dust jacket, yeah, kids destroy it. Uh, Moose Bandit. Um, I'll holler out some names. I wanted to get to the topic uh, I, again because I don't want to waste everybody's time who wanted to see topics on this. But So again, 10 bucks or, or better. Now, I've looked this one up. We've had similar ones to this that we bought in lots. Usually I lot up if it's the whole series together. There, I think the last one's the only one that's really worth top dollar, but the dust jackets change the whole story. This will be something I'll list at $34.50. It'll go on sale after, say, a month or so. Dust jacket, you need to have that in the title. DJ at the very, very least. A capital D right next to it, no space, and then a capital J for dust jacket. Um, you can do the small W with the forward slash and then DJ if you want. That would be the title designation to take up the least amount of, of spaces in your title on eBay. This will sell on Amazon. So don't just think eBay is the only source. Um, there's a bunch of book sites, and I've been talking to two people now about books specifically, but I, I only usually mess with non-barcoded books, and I've talked about that in Patreon. i got a video just on stuff like that, but non-barcoded books are, are usually the best. I am ungated in collectibles on Amazon, so I don't need to have an exemption for ASIN number or anything else like that. I can just list this without a barcode and not have to worry. I don't have to apply or nothing. So these are super easy if, if you're ungated correctly on Amazon. You'll get, in some cases, double with a dust jacket on Amazon than I would. So I might get 50 bucks on Amazon versus 15 to 25 on eBay. The little golden books, too. There's a huge market because people still buy them new. Books like this, they're not being made right now. So this is a different story. If they look for it, chances are they'll find it on Amazon and see it. The Little Golden Books, there's, they're still being made. So people do look for Little Golden Books on Amazon, which most people don't even get that aspect of it. So you can still sell the vintage ones. Again, there's no barcode on these. So you're going to have to get an exemption. Chances are there may be a listing up right now. But if yours is in a different condition, the back's different, it's not an A, all that sort of stuff, you don't want to piggyback off a listing of a vintage item in a collectibles category on Amazon. It could get you in trouble from what I understand. I have never done it. I always create my own because condition always is different than someone else's. So anyway... Uh, Dave, Midwest Picker. Again, I'm just randomly looking here. Um, are there other ones besides A's that are worth money? Yes. There's a couple B's and C's, like the puzzle ones. Even if it's not an A, if you've got the puzzle in the back, and it's not an A, a B, C, but it's complete, it'll still sell for okay money. Not as much as an A. Same thing with the paper dolls and things like that, too. All of those uh, still go if they're a B and a C. A B was still possibly been printed in the same year as the first edition, but so I, I buy some early ones if they're a B. Again, look them up and you'll see. A B, in, in some cases, we've gotten <clears throat> mostly like Disney and character ones. I'll buy a B and a C and a D sometimes is like the lowest. A D is probably usually out of my purchasing level because it's less than 10 bucks. But if they're a quarter or something, I'll buy them every time if they're vintage original ones. I don't necessarily have to always have A's. I did leave some that weren't A's. Because I wasn't going to spend... I didn't know how much we were going to end up having to get into them. I didn't know if the wife had some other stuff we were going to buy because we were both... We are trying to find a table. But anyway, um, so I left probably 20 that were B's and C's that just weren't high-value ones. Character Disney ones, you're, you're pretty much always if they're vintage. they got to be original vintage first editions. And you'll get 10 bucks for every one. I couldn't imagine you getting less from that. You can list them in the Disney section, too. Just list the date that they were published in the very first, all the way to the left in your title. List the date first so they know it's not some new one. And use the vintage section on the Disney for the vintage books. There's two sections. you got contemporary and vintage. Always use the vintage if they're really vintage. I don't mind listing the, those types of things out of the book category and you know the kids' book section. I don't mind that at all. Because you'll probably do better because you're not looking for someone who's just looking for um, a little golden book Disney. It's, it's somebody who just loves Disney. So they may just go to the Disney section and type in vintage Peter Pan as a keyword to see what they're looking for. That's going to show up. Again, until they sort it down. Most of the time, if you look on eBay, how they, they uh, show a, a search. Like if I go to eBay and I click search for some item, a Weeble or something. It's going to always go to um, recommended, which shows promoted listings. 
So if they're doing that, you know, I always change that. It just depends again. I always go to newest, oldest, because that's all that matters. If someone's searching for a book that they really want on, on eBay, they're never going to leave eBay's recommended again. So they're going to click newest first because they've probably already been looking at it. A, a diehard collector on eBay that collects kids' books or anything. Uh, this is fact. This is this is it. You can talk to anybody who, who does searches for items in the collectibles that they want. If you collect a niche, you do this all the time. We do this every day of the week, sometimes two and three times a day. We go to newest items in the Weebles category that was listed. My wife's got a massive collection these days. So if I'm going to look, and I'm a diehard collector, in the wife, the wife as well, this is what a diehard collector does. Every day they go, and they, they eliminate all the promoted. They don't care about any of that. They go and sort it by newest first. I looked yesterday. I don't need to know what was listed yesterday. 90%, I got to say it's really high. It's like 90%, at least I would guess, of diehard collectors, if you sell collectibles like we do, are going to always, 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 always go to newest first. Why would you want to have to look through everything again? Again, what eBay offers us with recommend is what they want you to see. I don't care what, what, what somebody's promoting because that's not what I'm looking for. If you sell in collectibles, it's not the same. It's, it's, a lot of that's useless, in my opinion. Why I don't do promoted listings to begin with, because it's useless in collectibles when there's only one, two, three, four of a certain item up. As long as your account's in good standing, there's always action. Our stuff constantly shows up. So I'm, I, I can't complain at this point. I know everybody's issues with sales. Yeah, sales are a little down. I've done some stuff. We're not, we're not bothered by what's going on as of now. Considering the economy, if the economy wasn't bad, this whole winter or summer would be rocking in my opinion. But anyway, I digress there. Let's look at a few more to give you some more ideas. Is this another parent's? Um, yeah, here's another one. I buy most, if it's, again, if it's got a dust jacket and it's a book like this, it's from 70s or before, especially if it's 60s or 70s, it's going in my cart. At the end of the day, I may look them all up real quick on my phone. And, and again, I buy ones without barcodes because most people are too lazy to scan you know, or too lazy to type stuff in. So they leave the ones or they'll just take them and hope they're good. But the, most of the time what I find is people just leave them because they don't want to sit there or they don't realize, they don't want to type in all this stuff. I, I'm the nuts so when I'll type all that in because I'm not going to waste my chance. Sometimes you can use the photo ID and, and look on there too on Google and then click on a Google link to eBay. And Anyway, that, there's other ways to do it if you're on your phone and you're, you're, you don't want to type on your phone. I, I'm not a big phone person, but I always look this stuff up. Again, I don't think any book I'm, I'm showing you is worth less than 10 bucks to me. Dust jacket, dust jacket. The whole reason why this one, and it's a cute book. I, I've seen this one before. It's not a super pricey book. I think this one should give us 24, 25 bucks with a dust jacket. Again, look it up yourself. Dollar two or whatever it is we have in each one of these. This is another one of those pickups. Now, I did leave maybe a half a dozen that had dust jackets that the dust jackets weren't good or the book itself was so mass produced or it wasn't a first edition dust jacket. You got to realize that dust jackets have first, second, third impression. They're not the same. It, when they re-release the book, sometimes the dust jacket's different. The, usually the biggest thing with a dust jacket, a different style of dust jacket, is the price on it. So when you see like, um, here's a good example. So when you see it, that's a first edition. That's the price. When it was re-released, it was re-released at a different price. So sometimes when you see a book, this could be a Stephen King book, and Anne Russ, a first edition that's worth some money, the dust jacket many times they'll cut that off. Why do they cut it off? Well, when they're discounted, sometimes they cut it off it's, so it's not the same price. Or someone who's a reseller cuts it off so you don't know if it's a first edition or not. It fools a lot of people. Now, I'm not saying everybody's doing that, but I'm sure there are people that are doing that. Cutting it off intentionally. A second pressing or second edition of or second impression of a dust jacket can still be worth hundreds. Um, 20, well, 20 years ago, I would have never even thought a dust jacket and all that would be worth it on its own. But we, we have bought, and again, I've talked about it in Patreon in at least a couple videos, um, dust jackets, and I paid nothing for it, like 20 bucks for hundreds of them. And, uh, and that was a good day, like dust jacket-wise. In one single day, we did $4,500 in dust jackets. 
we've probably done 20,000 in dust jackets than I would say, because I know we did 40 some odd hundred in one day. It was a Sunday, and those were auction prices. I did auctions at those time. Um, it was a great way, but anyway, let's hop to some more here. Now, subject matter, the type, obviously the author, not just the author of one of these, but the artist in some cases is all the money there. Hildebrandt, the Hildebrandt brothers do some kids books. Now, if you don't know who those are, I would hopefully you would Greg, look up Greg Hildebrandt or his brother. L look up who the Hildebrandts are and look up kids book on them. There's a ton like that. Boris, there's some kids books that have Boris. There's paperbacks that have the artists from, from kids books on them and adult book. I, I just tons of, of reasons why books are just awesome in my opinion. You get to read them. You know, they're, they, they look great. There's nice artwork might be tied to something first editions are good in anyone but this one again has um this one's been cut at the top now sometimes they're cut at the top to fit into a a, a mylar uh, dust jacket so it's not always that way the price is still there um there may have been some other thing up there which makes me uh, leads me to believe that that was probably trimmed for some other reason this one wasn't uh, you know a scam cut somebody cut it maybe it was um I don't know, maybe it's just so you can't return it or something. There, there's things they did like that. Like with records, the punched out that are discounts or the cut corners. Uh, there's a ton of different names for them, but um, Jack's upstairs. Uh, I'll have to show Jack again in another video one of these days. That, that He is just a, a whole lovable dog, but anyway. This one I've had before, two or three copies of. So one another one of these I've had, the Dust Jack, and I got like 26 bucks for it. So I knew this one, even with a little rip or something. Now, I've shown you how to fix stuff. I'll probably go ahead and put a little piece of repair tape on the back side of a couple of these just so it photographs better. I'm going to list that that was done. I'm not going to you know, do anything else like that, but I will put that in there, I think. It, it'll improve it so it's not like flapping. Um, I don't know how well that shows, but you can see it. So I'll, I will fix that. It'll take five seconds you know i'll just get my bone uh folder out and then the tape and we'll fix that up real quick like again these are very nice copies of it there's no issues in the inside whatsoever this is a well-liked book it's just not super super valuable dust jackets dust jackets dust jackets dust jackets when i'm looking at a, a bookshelf that's the first thing i'm looking for uh, maybe not the first one i look for stephen king books um, and stuff like that. There's a Nelson DeMille or De DeVille book that I look for always. Um, there's the Talbot Odyssey. I always look for the Talbot Odyssey. There's a few books that I look for, but after that, the next thing I'm looking for is dust jackets. Hardy Boys with dust jackets. Oh my gosh, those are really good. Nancy Drew, Hardy Boys, any of the earlier series. The Boy Scouts from the, the World War I era, awesome books. Tom Swift books with the dust jackets. Now, later versions, obviously, the Whitman editions didn't have have uh, the dust jackets on many of them. but Or the later Nancy Drew, they didn't have them either. But those are all in line of things that I always, always, always look for. Now, um, a whole other line, and I've talked about this before, is Wizard of Oz in general. I'm, I'm sorry, my nose is itching. We've got pollen all over in the yard. and I think that's, again, affecting me. Again, I paid a dollar two or dollar four, and I have to go back and double check. But it's it's one of those two for each book. By the time I use my discount cards, my $10 off, and then it was the, there's one day a week they run a discount for certain things, and that's the day we usually go. We go first thing the minute they open the doors if, if we're going to waste time going someplace. Again, we were honestly looking for a vintage table for a specific spot, but all of these vintage, 60s or before, I'm sorry, my eyes today, 60s or before of any of these sorts of books, I, I nab up. I, I just always do because I always sell them. I don't think there's a Wizard of Oz book that's from the 60s or before that's not worth at least 10 bucks. This should get me 15 or 20 bucks because it's in very nice condition. These are um, Random House. What's the deal with these is they're laminated covers. And what happens is it'll crack first on the spine. It's a little bit bubbly right there. You can see it. I'm not going to mess with it too much, but it cracks on the spine where the spine's folded. Once that cracks so much, it'll actually have a crack crack all the way through this, and then it starts to peel. So what you'll run into is some that the cover is like has chunks that were peeled off. Some people, resellers, and I've seen them do it, so I don't doubt it at all. And I've even seen somebody say, well, you can just do this. And I'm like, yeah, I'd never do that. But they'll rip it off and sell it like there was no problem with it. 
to you got to be careful with these so these go for okay money uh, for for like even general titles there's Peter Pan versions that are about this size but Wizard of Oz books from and I think this one's what 57 50 something let's see here um, let's see here what date do we got 1950 so it's even earlier earlier than I, I would imagine now one one thing on here when I want to determine if it's the age the age is correct or what edition it is usually when there's two lines that say first published like on in 1950 and then you'll see published 1950 those are usually first editions again not everyone but many of these this is a first edition of this one I did look into that this is the first time that this version for kids 5 to 9 was published that I've we've probably had 50 Wizard of Oz books, maybe 60 in the last 8 or 10 years. Um, everyone is sold. None of them are in my inventory anymore. Even the like the 60s versions of them. Even like Alice in Wonderland. That's another good topic there. I love the earlier Alice in Wonderland illustrations. The non-Disney ones even. Um, those are fabulous. But the book themselves, even if this was an Alice in Wonderland version, like a book like this, great. Um, Winnie the Pooh from this age wouldn't be Disney. That would be the original um, Millie, I think. I can't remember her name. Mini Millie or something. But those go for good money. These same style of books. Any of the earlier series, again, TikTok of Oz, and all, any of the earlier Oz books go for good money. This is a great primo thing here. I'd buy, if they had 20 of these, I'd buy 20 of these. Amazon, double that. In all honesty, and I know you're not really supposed to double the prices. I just put them high on both sites. Amazon, or they'll be sold. I sometimes sell these for the list price right off the bat. Sometimes I show stuff like this, and people say, "Well, it doesn't go for that." I see somebody selling it for eight bucks. If I only list something for eight bucks, it's only going to go for eight bucks. Maybe half a dozen of these are up at any given time at the most. You can again look on eBay and see how many were listed currently, how many are up, and how many sold. You can get a rough guesstimate on sell through rate from something like that. Not solid information but uh, at least if if there's say six up and 12 sold it's gonna sell so again i list them high i don't care I, I, the price wise on these back in the day if i went to an antique mall to buy this it would probably be about 15 or 20 bucks so that's where the the, the value comes in obviously the the, the internet is has screwed that around because people will see one person selling a book like this for eight bucks and they'll just list it for eight bucks because hey it's selling for eight bucks I'm the guy who comes around and puts 19.99 on it and sells it for 15 or 20 bucks. If you only put eight bucks on something, it's only going to sell for eight bucks, you know. And it, again, condition is everything, as well as the version of the book. The cover could look identical to a second edition of this. There might be a different dating structure in the inside of the book to dictate it. But in some cases, these kids' books don't always say first edition. So you've got to you got to pay a little attention if it's got a dust jacket. Many times you can use the price on the on the dust jacket. Again, if the book is 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 with that dust jacket, chances are at least if they look like they've been together and the whole works, it probably coincides with the dust jacket. So if the dust jacket is the first edition, chances are the book is as well. So that's just my take on that. But let me show you um, another Disney one to give you. There's 20 different series. This is Telltale, I think, or no, this is uh, Top. Is it Telltale? Top Tales. That's what this one is. There's, geez, Whitman versions are probably one of the most popular ones. Random House has some. Disney books in general, published by Disney, are out there as well, too. But prior to Disney creating their, like, their, their Disneyland records and stuff, they had other companies press it. So when I see stuff that's made by Disney, like a Disney item, and it's not published by Disney, I know it's old. I know it's worth getting if it's a dollar or less usually. Again, not everyone's going to be worth a fortune, but as I said, 14 bucks. I'll put this one up for it. It'll go on sale probably for $11.99. I'll be able to take an offer for $9.99 on it. If they send one in at $8, i will count her back at $9.99. Or $9 they don't accept it, I'll just wait. I'm not in a big hurry to sell this. If I sell one book, this is from a different, I think this is from a different store, but if, if I sell one, I usually get money to cover the cost of eight or ten books. So these are super easy, in all honesty. And I find uh, vintage kids' books, if I really wanted to, I could probably find vintage kids' books almost every day of the week. 
Um, maybe not on Mondays because a couple of the stores are closed on Mondays these days, but that's a perfect example on that. Now, here's another interesting book on. Now, there's a whole line of these, if I'm not mistaken, and it's a carryaway book because it actually has a handle so you can carry it away. So that's the plug on this one here, 10, 15 bucks. So again, I'm, I'm not making a fortune, but you know how easy these are to list? It's three photos usually, front, back, and then um, unless there's an issue with the front, back, and then usually the title page. Usually I, I shoot for five on these, to be honest. But if, if you want to get away with three, if it's a little golden book, you can do that because everybody knows the little golden books. They know what to expect. You have a decent shot, show the cover open for the back or something, and you can get down to three photos if you really want to. Again, I try for five, but... And it's a nice condition. These are tougher than you think. Even though they're not worth a fortune, the reason I know I'll get at least 10 or 15 bucks is because the handle isn't ripped off. These are super easy to just rip off. The kids would tear them apart. These would be messed up where there would be a sharp section up here. And they did try and kid-proof kid them by rounding and bending it up here. If you compare the spiral-bound, these type, to like a, a spiral-bound notebook, you'll see the difference instantly. These are semi-child safe. And that's another thing I look for. If the spine is like a plastic wired spine, it's newer. It's usually not worth much. If it's the cheaper kind that has the um, the double bend over, well, I don't know if you know what that is, but there's a double bend over on the end. It's later too. This is the earlier one. It's a tight, tight, tight one on here. Um, let's just show you the inside here. The artwork's really nice. And with it's like selling something like this, the artist's name helps sell most kids' books. If it's a kid's book, uh, like Mrs. Twigley's Treehouse, if it's a kid's book you've never heard of and you don't know the artist, but it's like really nice or really bizarre, um, the artist's name can help sell stuff like that. How many books have I sold just because of the artist? Probably 20%, 25% of every kid's book I sell is possibly by the artist in it. I know like a postcard, if it's a winchback or a specific artist, Brundage or something, I'm selling that item because of the artist on it. Maybe not even because of the graphics themselves, but because there's diehard collectors of specific people. Kids Books has a huge, we're not done too, I've got a few more here to show you. Kids Books has a huge chunk of extremely well-known artists who do the artwork on the covers or they do the inside. In some cases it'll be, um, let me give you an oddball example. Um, which like witches and Halloween topic kids books. Most of those have really bizarre and unique artwork. I wish I, I should have grabbed one to show you too. You never think about all those little things. I kind of just go off in, in my little world here, in my tangents, but um, the, the graphics are the key. Um, the, the devil and Halloween oriented ones are some of the best. If it's like a junker title, but it's got a cool cover like a ghost or something, they, they do much better. Um, like Gus, Gus Books. Look up Gus Books. Um, it's a ghost. So uh, the covers are just fabulous. When I'm looking for kids' books too, usually the ones that will do better would be tie-ins. Tie-ins. Tie-ins to something that's well collected. This isn't a tie-in. So you got to get somebody who knows who this is or who collects the artist or who collects the author. Uh, the, the little golden books, there's little golden books collectors and there's Disney collectors. So when I'm trying to source and get the best types of kids' books there are, you want multi-category interest kids' books. You want books that will be interesting to not just a specific one like the, the, the bear ones I showed you from the series, um, but you want ones that will be interesting uh, to two or three different types of people. The more people that would be interested in the book that you have, the higher you can get for it, the quicker it will sell, the better you will do. Again, keep your costs down. I, I try to not spend more than a dollar on kids' books um, each uh, as well. There was some Sherlock Holmes there, Whitman books. They're like $6 books. But there were, as soon as I put them down, somebody else nabbed them up. Maybe they didn't look them up. Maybe they were going to put them back. But be careful. Just, again, because it's a, a well-known author, Conan Doyle or something, Arthur Conan Doyle, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a right edition. Disney ones, like the Little Golden, like I showed you, earlier ones, originals, 29 cent covers usually, 25 cent covers, 10 bucks a piece or, or better on every single one of them. Now, age factor, let me get a date on this before I show you this. 
uh, is there a date on this one here? Okay, it is in Roman numerals. So again, I think everybody should know Roman numerals. Now this is one, there's a whole series of these, teeny weenies. Um, junior edition books are a whole series as well. Uh, let me show you the inside. Now, it, it, it's like comic book characters, like the funny comics and stuff from the 40s. This is 41. Um, so, I mean, the artwork is good in these. Condition's not super, super superb. It's like an 8 or $10 book. I pay a quarter for it. I don't, I'm not really worried on it. For a quarter, I can afford to have somebody spend, again, this will probably be three photos just because it's a cheaper book conditions not super or if I have a couple more and I think I got three of these three different versions of these, I'll probably sell it together put it up for 45 bucks three different again different ones of these um, and then sell it that way 45 bucks probably send out an offer for 37.50 drop it to 34.50 doesn't go there chances are I'll get like 27.50 24.50 bottom end on these probably what I'll go for anyway on three of these types of books now, another one that, that are good, and I might have shown these off in some other video here. These two are sitting around. I didn't get any new cloth fabric books, so I wanted to at least show you an example of those. They're usually cute artwork. With these books, too, they were more mass-produced. They were cheaper to make than the hardbound ones we just showed you. So these are cheaper books to begin with, so keep that in mind. A hard This book, even though it's big, may be much cheaper than this hardbound edition here regardless even if they came out in the same time frame and backs pretty cute and all that stuff now these are more for cute factors these are more for something for a display piece what's the year on this one can i make that out 1938 so this is 38 usually they're in decent condition believe it or not um, sometimes i get a stack of these other ones too they're not worth a fortune on these so don't fall for cuteness don't fall for all that it's a, it's not a character related it doesn't have a secondary tie-in it doesn't have a secondary market the only reason this one will probably do okay is because it's got the firefighter fireman tie-in it's got a police officer in the, in the co-pilot seat this is cute and it's firemen police something someone may buy as a gag gift or something like that so i'll probably still get 10 or 15 for it realize the value the original and initial value on some of these if they're cheaper books they're not going to be worth as much as a hardbound most all the time so i mean that's just my take on it in general every kid's book that i get that's vintage like this we have sold i i really don't think i have many up at all in my store and we've had hundreds hundreds of them in one sitting i've bought a huge assortment of them where would you get them besides a thrift store would be another question i know i know there's going to be out there let me hop back over i know i've been ranting but i want to get a lot in here the dolly alice in wonderland yeah dolly we went to the dolly museum salvador dolly in um sarasota st pete i didn't realize some of those were such large paintings like the melted watches they're, they're large i honestly liked his earlier stuff where it's more photorealistic. There's a there's a painting in the in his in the gallery there that he did in the twenty one of his earliest pieces. He was like twenty, and it's a portrait of a lady. I think the side shot or the back of it or something. It's really fabulous. It 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 blew me away looking at his more. I'm not a big person on abstract at all. I like photorealistic. That's where the that's what I like. But anyway, so I know he can do it. Um, but anyway, I'm just not into the fanciful stuff these days. Um, Kids' books, again, back to where we, where to purchase them. Estate sales. I, I can't tell you how many hundreds of kids' books we've pulled up at estate sales. I've got two 14 square boxes full of small vintage kids' books that we purchased in the last, say, two or three months. I mean, probably, I don't know, 200 of them maybe or something. I try to list those at the same time, so I'm not in a hurry. Christmas gifts. Kids' books are Christmas gifts. My, my wife and I bought for two different sisters vintage kids' books on several occasions. People have bought my wife vintage kids' books that she had for, for Christmas before. Christmas is a good time for kids' books. So we're orchestrating you know, to get these up before Christmas time. You know, by, by mid-August, I want to have them up. So it's a great time to be buying stuff like that. I don't know how many you're going to find at a garage sale. I, I can't say you're going to find a ton of them. You might find a few scattered here or there. You'll probably have better luck at a 
small rinky dink thrift store than anything else the name brand thrift stores probably you won't find many the only reason we found a bunch at savers there was one day of the week where they had just joe schmo pricing and they didn't put them at antique prices they just priced them at a regular kid book price um, which usually you wouldn't see and that used to be sundays around here they wouldn't have any of the regular staff on so sundays would be the day we used to go to savers so this is something you have to figure out too there's always, uh, well, not always, but the savers around here before they closed year, three or four years ago, there was always that Sunday where that was the best day to go. So we'd always be the first one in the door, and we'd hang out at savers. This is, again, three or four years, maybe longer, and um, before we had our stuff going like it is these days. but And we'd hang out there for a little while. Or we may even make a second trip out there because it was only a 10-minute drive one way or so out to savers from where we lived. Uh, lived at that time. We were living in a different place, but discarded library bin i don't library uh, like when they they do a library edition of a book there's a difference between a library edition and the the kids regular kids edition a library edition usually has cloth cloth spine and binding so it's not a stock edition it would be more like a a um radio station copy not a promo per se but a radio station copy of a record versus the stock copy they're, they're two different versions there's a third edition of most books, too, which is the publisher's advertising edition, which only has part of the book where they get people trying to, to buy it. It's a prospect of the book, basically. It's not the complete book, and that's another edition that's technically um, comes out before a first edition as well, at least if that's their selling selling strategy. Sometimes they'll, they'll have people go around, and, and you'll look at it. Dr. Seuss, some of the early Dr. Seuss books were like that, or some of the before Scholastics got involved in, in kids' books and stuff. There was there was um, like door to door book salesmen that would approach libraries and stuff, and they'd have that that same book and you could sign up or you could even get a copy of it. So there are other editions of books that most people aren't aware of. So um, I try to stay away from the library editions because usually the stock edition goes for more because they'd be more abused in a a decent stock edition in great condition just doesn't show up very often. A a library edition too is going to have the the first blank page sometimes there'll be stampings on the spine stampings in the book there might be a couple of, of pockets on the front they might have ripped one off put a new one on so there's almost always damage to a library edition of the book i'm not saying sometimes it's not worth getting we've gotten some um nancy drew books the last few out of the line and they're paperbacks i think is the, the those ones and we got them at at a book sale and they had sometimes they have and sometimes they don't um, but they had them on in a couple we had, and we still got real good money out of them. So not every book um, I would I would stray away from. I do go to those sometimes, the sales, when they have them at the libraries here. Again, because what happens with our library here, people donate books all the time. And, and I've walked up on people donating, and sometimes there's vintage books there and stuff like that too. So believe it or not, the, the library has no space for them. They don't take in books that way. When people donate the books at our local library system here, the books go to a book sale. They'll have tables of books out, you know, this this month, that month, and stuff like that. So a lot of the books that are at those sales don't have library marks on them here locally where I'm at. I don't know how it is everywhere else, but around here. So I go to most of those because many times, again, it's it's Aunt, Aunt Ethel's book that she was done reading. It was a gift, and she doesn't where she, she didn't want to do anything with it. She just donates them nicely to the library. And most people don't know that they don't usually take books off the street to put into their inventory that usually doesn't happen you know unless it's like a rare book or something's about it so that's the ploy with that i don't usually go to to them other than you know the table sales and i don't worry about the library editions usually either again not every book some library editions are still worth some money um what is the range for shipping costs now uh, it's a media book they're media so you're talking 340 350 max and almost any one of these and sometimes it's even much cheaper than that um, again, they're going to weigh, like a little book like this might weigh 10 ounces. Cardboard, I'd always wrap around these. It's going to be bagged. Every book is bagged, airtight bagged. So if there's moisture, they can't get damaged. So again, from there, it's every book is wrapped in cardboard. Every book. So the 12-inch the, the cubes from eBay, those are chopped down and wrapped around the book. Usually not wrapped down. We just take a side of a box, and it takes seconds. And again, those are technically not free, but they are, so to speak. Those are the the boxes you get. Uh, we get 150 per anchor store every three months. So, you know, roughly 100 bucks of free boxes if you got two anchor stores in a month. 
So that's how that figures out. Um, I buy boxes too, because I never have enough, it seems. Um, six by nine, so if, if it'll fit in a six by nine, six by nine. I also have nine by 12s, eBay, poly. None of them are padded, I don't take padded. I always use cardboard. Padding can be popped with a knife. It's a lot harder to pop a, a, a piece of cardboard. It's usually doubled, depending on the size of the, of the book. Sometimes if it's a bigger book like this, this is just going to be wrapped in, in plastic airtight, and then it's just gonna be cardboard. There'll be no poly on this one. I'll send it just like a record, basically. It'll just be the 14-inch cube boxes, which I get from my local box manufacturer for 82 cents, I think is what the current price is. But anyway, they're easy enough to package. I package magazines, everything the same way. It's all in cardboard for all these. If it fits in a poly, it goes in a poly, even with the cardboard. But I don't do any padded envelopes ever anymore these days. I know I've gotten that question, actually. Padded can be popped with a knife. A knife will be a lot harder to go into a piece of cardboard. That's just my take on it. I haven't had a kid's book damaged yet. I haven't had a comic book damage, a magazine, or any of that kind of stuff. So, anyway. Uh, Ryan Witten just sold some George Mags on Macari, and now I can get my fuel pump fixed. Well, congrats. Good to hear. Good to hear. I've got a couple more Georges in there now. Prices, obviously, from even when I, I, I did a video on that. There were... Back when I first knew about a the George magazine, the one edition I had been looking for forever was going for forty five hundred up to ten thousand dollars. We sold our copy of George for was twelve hundred and fifty three or something like that. I had nothing. I mean, I bought a huge stack of books for almost nothing, and we sold. I got comics and everything in that lot, and um, I still have a bunch of stuff from there too. But anyway, I, I love magazine. Well, thank you very kindly for that. I'm glad it helps you. Uh, 349 for medium mail these days. Yeah, it just depends on where it's going. And, and sometimes with the discount in first class, you might get it a hair cheaper. There's no discount for medium mail. In some cases, again, it depends on the weight, depends on where it's going. You might do better off running it as first class. If the book weighs six or seven ounces, sometimes first class can be cheaper than media with the discount, with your discount, mind you. You just got to be a little careful on it. Jonathan Britton. I, uh, probably a dozen people have reached out to me or I've, they've sent me photos of George Magazine. Two people that I know of have got that same issue that I, I had. One got like 980 and another one got in that $1,000 range too. This was a little while ago, right after the video came out, but they had no clue. You know, we all mess up on stuff. I passed up on a first, first edition, first pressing of issue number one of Dragon Magazine, and I could kill myself on that one, because that was the first TSR, Dungeons and Dragons, Dragon Magazine. It was worth, I don't know, a thousand or better, and I, I passed I passed right by it for two bucks, and that was a while ago. I even went back after I realized what I saw and, and went back, and it was gone. You know, you're going to make a mistake. George, now, again, I try to keep up on what's hot. If, if you do... I've talked about this. I do just searches on, on eBay all the time. I'll just type in random words, just constantly. It's like a brainstorming session on searching and see what comes up. I'll pick a random category sometimes. If I want to do a new niche and we're working on a new one now, I'm not going to shout out what it is, but um, we're working on a new niche now. And it's something I found by doing exactly what I just said. No lie, it's just, I just random words. Wife will throw out a word, I'll throw out a word. Those two words go into the search box. Whatever comes up, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I usually use a couple of words, two usually, honestly, and then I'll go from there. If, if a bunch shows up and I'm just doing all categories, then I'll try and narrow it down to a collectibles and see what happens. I might bop back and check out antiques and see what happens. It, it, it works. I mean, and I found a lot of niches that I didn't know. One of our best-selling items that we've been selling for years on Amazon and stuff is something that I found that way, too. It's good to find something that there's no competition for years. It makes your routine sales right across the board. You know, and again, you, if, if you don't, if you can't think outside the box, the best way is just randomly look for things. Use a couple random words. Uh, brown, um, creased, that's a, a term I've used in the past in collectibles. Um, uh, faded, creased, faded. I mean, all these kind of words are just things you could stick in there and just see what happens. They'll lead you somewhere. And that's, again, why I found stuff that many other people don't. I use oddball words that may make no sense, even like when you're titling stuff. Don't title stuff because it makes sense. Who cares what the title wording is? 
you want words that show up when someone's searching for those words. You don't want to make a fancy sentence or, or embellish things that have nothing to do with the listing because it's not going to draw people to your items at all. You're not going to get a bonus or a, a boost out of stuff like that. You know, if it's if it's like a character one, you've got all the ins you need. I don't need any any help titling this. You know, it's a first edition. That's you know one st space ed um, little golden. I'll put Peter Pan in the beginning, of course. I'll put the date. If it's fifty, whatever the date was, nineteen fifty or whatever the date is on this one, that's the first thing in the title. The date, so they can't confuse it with something else. Um, I get questions, is this original? And it's, I've got the date in there, and I, I, I only have to say that usually once in a blue moon, usually because, again, I've got the dates in there. It's, I try to put in my listing description vintage or um, due to the age, it may have wear related to this, that, and the other thing. I'll do a generalized statement for things like the, the kids' books, too. I'm not going to, unless there's something specific and the condition's all about the same, I'm using the same condition lines, my same condition box for, for all the golden books, you know. Unless there's, again, something specific. I'll show it in there. That's the only reason you'd see uh, more than five photos for a little golden book, for example. If there's something wrong with it, I'm going to show it. And the only reason I'd even have bought it and wanted to list it is if I know, even with the issue, I'll get set amounts of money, which is usually the $15 mark. These books I expect to get 15 but I know I should get 10 for them all. I try to not list anything that I won't get, or won't have a strong possibility of getting at least 15 bucks for the item. I don't sell, list anything. And I'd list stuff, the easiest stuff to list, that's what I'm listing. Two photos I love the best. I, we do a second import of the very first photo, so I'm still only taking two. I'll have three images up, one will be a zoom in, and then front and back of, of single side items, or sometimes even books, believe it or not. You know, and they'll still sell. You know, as long as there's no issues with them, no writing or anything else like that, you're good to go. I know I, I rarely say this, and I always forget, but if you're enjoying the conversation, please slam the thumbs up there. Really helps out the channel, shows some love for us here. Now, I probably have missed a bunch of the feedback, so yeah, I only can go back so far. Uh, elementary certification. Well, there you go, Murray. AJI 3 sales, how are you doing? Well, thanks everybody too for the support. A deal finder. Matt Jake, how you doing, Matt Jake? And Marty, of course. Linda, how you doing, Linda? Let me just shout this out here too again. I'm just going to reiterate a few things here so I'm not missing anybody. Uh, Patreon video. As soon as this live show is up, and I'm going to probably cut it in about 20 minutes here, maybe a little less, maybe a quarter after, we've got some people coming over tonight to look at something for us. I found something, and I don't, I don't know enough about it. So I've got someone who's a specialty in this, someone I have called directly. And anyway, they're going to come out and look at it. I might have something really good or I might not. It's hard to say. But anyway, um, yeah, Amazon did just sell books for those that didn't know. Yeah, I'll publish. I'll, I'm going to I'm just waiting on my son's schedule. Otherwise, I'd have the whatnot up already. It, I, in fact, I may have it up tonight, but chances are tomorrow I promise it'll be up. It's either going to be Saturday or Sunday. And again, for those, I'll pop back to the Patreon. This is five pounds of uniform button. There's probably, I don't know, 400, 500 buttons in here. They're British mostly. Um, there might be some Canadian stuff. But I'm going to blow these out. We're just going to grab a handful of them. I'll show them. We'll, I've got a different camera set up mounted on the ceiling this time so I can zoom and a bunch of other stuff, I hope. So that will hopefully work out. But I've got 4,000 postcards I'll blow out. I might open up some random boxes of stuff that's been in inventory for a while. I don't know yet, but I've got a lot of stuff postcard-wise. Most of the postcards would be worth 10 bucks or less. Maybe I missed a couple. I doubt it. But, you know, maybe there's a few I missed. Other than that, um, the postcard-wise, if you've got a booth, you get 2 bucks a piece for them. Um, if you sell online and you want to learn postcards... There's there's a bunch in there that should get you you know five to seven bucks all day long, um, in that price range too. If you price them reasonably, you're probably going to sell quite a few of them. Um, again, that's my take. And I just don't sell the cheaper stuff anymore. 
And again, I'm I I'm don't not big fan on doing lots as much. We try to list. We get so much stuff in that I can sell individually these days that I don't. I, stuff just sits a lot if it's lot material, and I don't like to mess with lots. So there's potential to lot up stuff like that too, like 20 cards from Chicago listed for 25 bucks or whatever the case may be. We do that. I mean, I do that occasionally, but I'm um, just like matchbooks. I've got 4,000 matchbooks probably sitting in the house from many different purchases and. I know they do very well, um, uh, very well, but I just haven't had the time and I didn't want to mess with getting the flatbeds running and all that because it's so much easier just to take a photo or run it through the duplex scanner. I, I think I'm spoiled on that duplex scanner and, and you know some of the digital stuff we do too. Um, I, I love the, the um, Nikon D5300, so anyway, I'm using a Sony A6400 series 4K just for those who might ask, but... Um, hey, Annie, how you doing? Uh, Frozen House, good evening. I don't want to miss anybody. I think I bopped around and missed. I said Dave's in the house. Antiquarian uh, Bookman, welcome, welcome. Matt Donnelly, how are you doing? Uh, glad to have you, and thank you very kindly. And I got Dave here. Another fellow YouTuber, Midwest Picker. Jimmy as well. Jiminy Flip It there up there. That's Marty. He's got a channel too. I don't know if you put out many videos lately there, Marty. Um, yeah, I know I've bounced around. Joe, how you doing, Joe? 30725. I don't know if that's an area code or not, but that may be the case. Again, I, I have, um, I'm an auction professor on, on whatnot, but um, I've got links. I'll post some in, uh, maybe on my uh, community tab here on, on Patreon, or not on Patreon, on uh, YouTube for you. Uh, and I see Marty's popped in there. Thank you, Marty. I went to an estate sale. Hey, Annie, how you doing? Went to an estate sale of a little golden book collector who had a whole wall of them, but the estate sale company was charging way too much. Yeah, they do turn up a lot. Condition is everything. Estate sale companies, it depends on the one you go to. I personally around here know the ones that high price most of the stuff. I like the smaller ones that are newer to, to estate sales because they don't know everything yet. They haven't determined They don't have somebody to call on stuff. Around here, most of the bigger estate sale companies that have been around for years, they have a, a guy or a gal for everything. So I, don't, I never get called unless it's records. If it's not records, I never hear from most of them in all honesty. Uh, records I get to hear from some, but um, that's about it. If they are long time, so I usually hit up the ones that are smaller or I'll go to the oddball sales. I haven't been to a estate sale in a long time, though, honestly. It's been at least a year or better, probably. I couldn't even tell you it's been so long. We've been to this whole year, maybe we've done estates or uh, 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 thrift stores maybe four times. There's one that I, I donate to that I walk in occasionally, but that's about it. And it's just tiny. It's, it's one that I help out at to help their IT. If they ever need IT, I'm the guy they call if they have a computer issue or whatever. Anyway, I, I volunteer for that. For, for It's a cancer society, um, and they do women's – I don't, I don't want to get into what they do, but anyway, they're, they're very nice people. One of the ladies is from my church, so um, – Yeah, yeah, you're fine, Marty. No problem. Yeah, the spine color, there's like three different versions of spines on them. The ones that look like wood, like it's like a paper one, it's not like uh, reflective. Those are the earliest ones that I'm aware of. Um, but yeah, there are several different kinds. There's gold, there's silver. And again, there are some that aren't the, the metallic look like these here, but there are some different versions. In fact, there's gold and then silver right there. So that just gives you an idea. And he's 100% right. That does matter too. Sometimes the spine color is wrong and it's not a first edition because of that. Um, they usually have an A on them if they're first edition, but occasionally I'll see the spine. That may be that they mixed up the spine or it was like a transitional period or something. I don't know. Uh, I know there's variants of some of them, too. There's some typo in one or two that I've heard of, too, that the wording was mistyped on one page or there's a letter out of place or something, too. Uh, yeah, the large versions, too, can sell. A, little, a giant little golden book, I think, is what they are. Or a giant golden book, maybe that's what they call them. Uh, hey, Michelle, how are you doing, Michelle? The wall behind me looks like APs. Yeah, my my rooms. This is most of this is um, uh, live, uh, up for auction or sale right now. 
some of this stuff isn't. These are all unlisted. These are all unlisted. Those are unlisted. That's unlisted. In that bin up there, there's, well, I don't even know how well you can see it, but behind here, there's probably 258 millimeter and 16 millimeter films that we got in, and I haven't even looked through them yet. Um, I usually rotate that box, so when new ones come in, the old ones that have been in there usually get pulled, and we do something with them when the box fills up, and it's full twice now. I got a whole other bin full of, I probably got... 600 8 millimeter reels 50 to 800 feet and then I probably have I don't know 120 130 16 millimeter some home movie and then some mass produced um, anyway I, I love love the stuff I'm, I'm, in, I'm enthralled with it so I don't mind having it stuffed everywhere um, if I turn the camera around which I don't want to do because there's just so much to do when I turn it um, I've got I've got a lot of inventory, and that's just in this one room. Uh, again, the shelving goes all the way around and down a hallway and everything else, but anyway. Uh, uh, Jonathan Britton, I find a, a golden book set. Those take a book, leave a book. It has to be the earlier ones, the first editions, to be worth money. So it, just because it's a little golden book, don't be fooled. It has to have the A in it. If it's a newer version, some of them I don't think they put the A in and haven't in, in decades, if I'm not mistaken. If it has a barcode, I don't even look at them anymore at all. I like, again, I, I said it, I, I, the ones without barcodes are usually the kids' books that I grab up. If it's got a barcode other than maybe like a first edition Rainbow Fish or Dinotopia or something, um, a different story. I mean, there are some that I'll buy with a barcode, don't get me wrong. Um, Hildebrandt's, I'll buy theirs with barcodes because they came out in the 80s, so they're, they're still... They did stuff before that, but uh, Hildebrandt's. Look up the Hildebrandt's. I, I said that earlier, but um, anyway. Let's get to a few questions here. You've been at it a while, Michelle. I know is, is you've been on here for, geez, a supporter for a very long time. So I, I know you've, you've, I'm sure, advanced at this point here without a doubt. Yeah, kids definitely destroy things. Um, you spanned it. Um, comic Boom. I have Mormon children's books from the 70s. I would say I would look those up. Believe it or not, the the more uh, I've sold some Mormon early Mormon items, and they've went for some really good money. You don't run into Mormon Mormon kids books now. It's probably from I don't know what area of the country you're in, but it's probably from some of the schools. I would say if they're they're Mormon books, they still do sell. Um, I do. I still mess with like early ones. Like another line that people will miss, like Alcoholics Anonymous, and even the religious books that are tied to AA. The first editions, those are monster crazy priced. So I, I never look look stuff like that aside. I do dig into them and look them up. Now, you can look them up on A Books. You can even dig into Amazon because most of these books I got here, I can list on Amazon and get good money for them. And I'll be one of the few that has them up because most people just don't mess with it. Or they, they, they're not on gated and they, they'll have to get an exemption for every book one at a time and I know people are hesitant you don't want to hijack a listing because then you could be booted for good and on and on so I usually have little competition if any competition listing the kids books on Amazon I, they might be a little slow selling but I usually get really good money for them and if they're duly listed you know across this and other sites I've got nothing to lose I just have a higher opportunity to sell them for more money than someone who doesn't mess with Amazon per se Christmas time again even for them on Amazon is better it's the best time a large chunk of your sales, if you're selling certain items on Amazon, are during Christmas season. Um, hey, Daryl. Carolina Picks in the house. How are you doing, Daryl? Um, I answered everything, I think, yesterday, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Everything was answered on Patreon yesterday, too. I probably have a couple emails in there that I need to get to that I probably won't get to till tomorrow morning. But tomorrow, I've got nothing going on. We're, we're recording, and I've... I've got some model work for um, the Weebles thing we're working on. Um, call out to Marty there, but um, I've got a lot of green screen where we've we revamped the the Weebles, and I'm gonna do some other videos. Um, we're gonna branch out a little bit tied to these areas. I want to go into some his history, some depth, um, show you what a real collector. Uh, thinks about stuff. We want to hit in a little of that. If you want to sell and do good in niches, you got to know collectors. You got to know how diehard, how how crazy fans are on certain things and stuff. I think being a collector helps you be a better seller, reseller. Just my personal opinion. You don't have to be, but I think in the long run, you, it'll pay off. Um, don't just buy stuff to buy it. I collect things that I like. 
buttons are one of my my things I've been into for 25 plus years so I love buttons I get really excited when I see a huge bag of military buttons um, anime and athletics oh well glad to hear thank you very kindly I got some more Yu-Gi-Oh and some more I've got a whole bunch of Pokemon cards and stuff in house um, I, one of these days, I'll have to put together a video on how to tell the fakes. There's Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon fakes, and i got a box of both of them, fakes and real ones here. Um, I've had somebody taken for some really expensive cards recently, and, and that brought me to the, maybe we should discuss fakes in the industry, too, um, like stamps. I saw some really good-looking Zeppelin fakes, the, the airmail, the expensive ones, too. Really good ones here. I don't know where somebody would have done done those, but they looked very fine quality. They were fake, though. No question. The gum was... Everything about it was, was fake. A uh, novice might not realize that. I guess that should be a good point, but thank you very kindly. Again, if you're enjoying the conversation, please slam that thumbs up there. 112 uh, thumbs up there. We've got 184 in-house right now. Um, if it flips, it ships. Uh, how you doing? Wilkins, yeah, that's a very good artist there too, Annie. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Cute is the word. Um, that, that, again, that's why these these kind of things go for like ten bucks because they're cute, you know. And, and I will sometimes put the word cute in the title. You're, it's not gonna. It's usually not gonna help you putting the word cute in there as a search word. But as long as there's enough searches, like a um, a kids book, if you've got all the key important information and you have room to put cute, I usually put it in there because when someone's sliding through, they make oh look at cute you know um it's kind of like um geez there's a lot of things i kind of do that like mid mod century i'll put that in a listing if i have the space I, it, it's not necessarily something someone's always going to look for there's a certain percentage will but cute's another one of those words adorable i use occasionally again only if i have extra space only if i have extra space usually i want to fill up the title space all the way to the end on some of these types of items so i'll throw in some extra words just to fill it up and I say that because the long titles, if you're searching from eBay, the long titles stand out more so than a short title in some categories. Some items, as I said, I, I use only a few words for the title because I want to want people to wonder what it is to look inside. It's, it's like changing a window shopper into an actual customer. You've got to get them inside to buy something. And if they're just shopping through the gallery view when they're sorting and sliding through a search results, they may miss it. So you really got to do something to draw their attention at that space and get them in there. So sometimes I do better not listing as many uh, keywords in the title. They, they'll, th again, you have to have a couple just to get their attention or have it in the right category. But that it's a good ploy. Let me just put it that way. We've done far better in some, some items listing few words as opposed to many. Some items like a shirt or something, you'd have to list every detail you can think of to, to make sure you're going to get the, the best details out of it. Um, we're going to end it off here in just a couple minutes. Do I sell children's book bundles? I'll occasionally sell a lot. Like if I bought, what's that, Sweet Valley, what did we get? I think it was Sweet Valley we bought like 70 of those not too long ago. There's a few in there that are worth selling on their own, but mostly it'll be sold as a big lot. Um, Louis Lamore. There's there are some that I sell in lots. Very rarely. If if it's something I'll get a lot of money for, I, I'll buy it and, and sell it. I usually don't buy bulk book lots anymore. Honestly, and uh, single ones, yeah, because there'll be more potential to sell them. If you buy a whole bunch from like one series and the series isn't very desirable, you may hold on to a huge stack of books for a long time until that one diehard collector comes off. I don't like taking up spots, but like these books with dust jackets going to sell this pretty quickly. I would imagine most of these with, with good pictures and SEO title on it, I should be able to get rid of them in four weeks or less, most of them. The Disney and Little Golden will probably be out in the first two weeks or so, somewhere in that range. Uh, it just depends, but that's most of it. And even if I don't sell them all at the price I want, I can always blow them out or just pull them and then worry about throwing them in a lot. Um, again, I don't I don't try to list anything that's less than 15 bucks, so that's that's my goal on all of these. I'll keep them till Christmas if I need to, and then afterwards till infinity as long as I've got the space. Um, Richard Scary sells okay. I've had Richard Scary has a whole line of stuff. There's a board game I've had. There's play sets for Richard Scary, and what they are is they're 
cardboard pieces and they're th they make three-dimensional buildings and they come with little Richard Scarry um, figures and I think there's six characters to the Richard Scarry set I have Richard Scarry from when I was a kid still at my mom's house um, they go okay Richard Scarry is not bad at all I've got probably two or three of the big uh, bound editions the hardbound editions of, of the uh, first pressings of the first releases of them. they do okay they're like bears and stuff they're animals they're anthropomorphic characters i have sold the, the the play sets go phenomenally well i think we got like 70 or 80 i've shown them on this channel i got them maybe a year or two ago and, and they sold i had three or four of them and they sold really really easily richard scary is collectible it's like teddy Rux, Rux, uh, ruxpin there's a book series of those that sells the teddy ruxpin himself if he works sells there's actually a guy on ebay that repairs them it's kind of like um the Dark Tower game, where there's a guy on, on eBay that repairs them, puts new tech new tech in there that will still be just like the originals. We'll fix the lighting and the whole works. Um, stuff like that does very well. I don't, uh, Richard Scarry is decent. It depends again. I don't buy any Richard Scarry unless it's a first edition these days. And I, I don't. I'm not a big fan on on listing lots. That's why I've got a lot of hundreds of pounds of Victorian scrap because I don't I don't like listing bulk lots. We usually would put together like 50 pieces of scrap and a lot and we'd get 3450 for them but it, it's time consuming you can only do so many of them in an hour and that's that's the thing you need 12 photos on one of those and if if you're new and you need some stuff to list those are great items you know if you don't have the inventory they're going to sell it's not a waste of time you get four up it's 140 dollars an hour average list time if you're quicker like we were you can probably get eight or so of those lots up in an hour 34.50 is what we usually sell them for. Bigger lots or nicer stuff, I'd sell them for 57.50, and we'd take home 42.50. It's the price range. Those are the offer offers to watch or values I'd send out in those. Uh, we're heading to the 20 after. I'm gonna end it here. I do, as I said, have something going on. I, I'm excited to know if we we scored enough to to buy a decent used car, or we just got a couple hundred bucks out of it. It's it's a a toss up on this piece. I don't know enough, but anyway, I'm not going to give out too much on it, but uh, anyway, I'll appreciate everybody coming on again. If you haven't hit the thumbs up, 188 people in house, uh, what, 129 thumbs up, please slam the thumbs up. Good content today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, I, I do a lot of kids' books. Just just dust jackets from kids' books, we've sold 10 plus thousand dollars worth. At least, probably 14 or 15 thousand. I've sold hundreds of maybe thousands of kids books in all honesty in all in the last 10 years kids books i routinely find kids books can be found all over the place uh thrift stores are pretty decent for kids books all the ones i showed you i think or all but maybe one of the ones i showed you came from a thrift store and i'm not showing you the two boxes i have sitting here i'd be i could do a four hour long expose on all the books we found kids books again none of them have barcodes none of the ones that i think in any of these lots that we got have barcodes it's the best ones to get because there's you're going to eliminate all the lazy buyers out there who don't want to look something up manually. And there are a lot of people that do that. I would never have recommend just grabbing them and buying them if you don't know your kids' books. Look them up. I don't care if they're 50 cents or a dollar. You know, it's not worth your time to sell a $3 or $4 kids' book that you spent 50 cents on that you're going to have to, you know, pay fees on in the whole works. It's not worth your time. Considering if you're going to do four photos or five photos and upload and list condition aspects, writing that stuff in there, it's not a quick list. You want to be able to list at least, in my opinion, $400 worth of merchandise. If you've been established, $400 or more. If your first year or two, it can be much less because you need to have the experience and you're going to have to get some cheaper stuff up too. But um, once you've been doing this for a while, you need to at least be able to get $400 worth of merchandise up an hour. If that's four items in an hour or 50 items in an hour that equal you that same amount, it doesn't matter. You know, sometimes I think more 50 items is better than four, only because you have 50 more chances in selling it. If they're oddball items and you only list four in an hour, you got to have the right person on, and that right person may take you a while. So if you need to flip it and get your money back right away, do what's the quickest. You know, anyway, I'm going to let you go. I know I didn't get to everybody here, but I hopefully that helps a little bit with kids books. I love kids books. You know, some of them bring back some very fond memories of when I was a kid. We There's a book called Barney Beagle, and I actually have an original copy here. Um, but Barney Beagle, we I named my, my only dog as a child was Barney Beagle. He was a beagle, and we named him Barney Beagle because of that kid's book. So I have a, a fond 
uh, memory of that book. And I, I usually, if I, I up it, if I get a better edition, I, I buy it and then get rid of the old one. Not worth a fortune, but stuff like that. Maybe there was some book your, your parents read to you, your grandmother read to you. I mean, all that stuff to me is, is, you know, childhood delights and memories that, you know, live with you for the rest of your life. So I love the old stuff. I remember a lot of this, you know. So anyway, we're going to let it go out there. I know I'm rambling now. Little Red Hen. Yeah, there's some good ones there. I know exactly which one you're talking about. Um, there's a couple of them. Um, uh, what's the other one? Um, Picasso and Dolly did um, uh, record covers. So did Warhol. You know, the banana, uh, uh, Velvet Underground. He did the Velvet Underground cover, Warhol. So I, I love the, the, in fact, I got a video in, in Patreon just talking about specifics because of the artist who did the record cover. So that's another topic there. Again, I'm going to, uh, upload it the minute I click off here that video is uploading for those in patreon you got 35 more minutes of a video coming up tonight it's going to go into a bunch of different things you get to see some neat things stuff you usually don't get to see on on patreon it's something that Joe posted or I'm sorry Doug posted up there but anyway again I responded to everybody yesterday in patreon so if you if you posted something on the community tab go back and look because I had some questions for several folks on their uh, follow-ups and stuff on some things on there. I priced or told you what you need for most everything on there other than the ones that I have questions on as of last night. So anyway, I'm going to let you all go. I do appreciate everybody coming on tonight. I've got a pretty cool video coming up tomorrow. I spent $2 on something, and I'm going to show you hundreds of dollars out of that $2 bag, and I promise you it's something that probably every one of you people out there, everyone watching this video has probably seen a few of these. I can almost guarantee you. You know, and you might be surprised. I'm going to show you the ins and outs. We're going to break this bag of toys down. It's toys that I spent $2 on. And we're going to show you some major value. We're going to show you on eBay. It's, it's a repeatable. It's not one-offs. These are things that routinely sell for some big companies. So tomorrow's video, pay attention to. It's already been shot. That's the video for tomorrow here on YouTube. It's going to be a good one. It's going to be up early. We've got some plans in the evening. So I hope to have it up by 5, 5.30 tomorrow. So... That will be it for tonight. Again, slam that thumbs up if you're enjoying the conversation. I will let you go.